Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about matrices of linear operators get in a given basis. Uh, so what this is basically is we're going to start off with some map P. Uh, so we have some map P which goes from one vector space V to another vector space W. And we're going to call this a linear transformation if we have the following condition. So a transformation, if you think about it, all this means is we're transforming from one vector space to another. But what, is the linear, what does linear mean? And the linear is exactly the same linearity that we saw for inner products. So in other words, what we're going to do is we take this inside part and exactly identically, we take the lambda in front and keep x inside. And we take the mu in front and keep y inside. So this is precisely the idea of a linear transformation. Pretty simple. Uh, this concept um, is this property is often called linearity. So sometimes we'll just talk about linearity, um, which like we did for um, in, uh, in, a, in the video on inner products, uh, we just say linearity a lot of times rather than try to go into more detail. Uh, if we have furthermore that V is equal to W, uh, sometimes we'll say that it's a linear operator. Uh, and the reason why here we turn, use the term operator is because an operator basically operates on one single vector space. So it kind of stays within itself. Uh, and so, yeah, so we have a linear operator if V is equal to W. So let's start getting into this. Uh, so we're going to start off with some given ordered basis of a vector space B. And we're going to consider the action of some operator on the basis vector. So here we're saying operator, which basically means it's acting on itself, right? So V is equal to V. In a, or V is equal to W. In other words, P is going from V to V. Right? So P is going from V to V. Um, okay, so each of these, the P, right? So what is, the, what is a P doing on a certain basis element? Well, it's going to send it to some linear combination of the other basis for elements, right? So it's we're staying inside um, V. So basically, this is going to send us to some, I'll denote it P because uh, we're letting in a little linear operator. Um, there's going to be K of them, one, one for each of the basis elements. Um, K is equal to 1 to N. Um, and this, because we're looking at EI, will denote PKI. Um, as the coefficient. And what this gives us is it allows us to actually, like we can, as we did before with like the transition matrices, we can convert this into a matrix, so column vectors, right? So each of these will have its own little uh, uh, column vector associated to it. Um, so in other words, the column vector which represents EI has a line, it has a one, yeah. So what we basically have is that a column vector which represents EI, this is just going to be a 1 in the zero i row and 0 is elsewhere. So EI is going to be represented by 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And here the 1 is the i row. So this is EI. Um, and if we look at this, this uh, kind of column uh, or this uh, operator, so if we multiply m by this, this is basically going to be picking out the um, ith column, right? So m times ei gives the ith column, ith column, which is the word that fits into this spot. Uh, so in other words, oops, can't see. There we go. Um, so in other words, what we can do is actually just look at this linear operator on all the basis elements and just form some matrix to allow us to basically see some matrix into using this linear operator. So in other words, what we're saying, if I start off with some basis, um, and we have some linear operator P, so P again, remember, is going from itself to itself, V to V. Uh, then the matrix, which we denote P of B. So here, this B is important because depending on the, the basis we start off with, this is going to be different. Uh, I should use back here. P1, 1. So basically, we just take these column vectors from above 
and we place them into a uh, vector. So two, one, all the way to PN1, P2, P1, 2, P2, 2, PN2, P1N, P2N, PNN. Um, so this gives us the matrix linear operator. So in other words, what we're doing is we start off with, um, if you kind of think about this, is we start off with, um, yeah, so we, we start off with some like matrix and we multiply this and that's going to give us this matrix after the linear operator has acted on this matrix. Um, so this matrix in some cases, so in some sense, um, encodes the information on the, the linear operator. So we'll call this the matrix of the linear transformation P in the basis um, B, uh, or the linear operator, um, because it's staying on itself either way. Uh, so we have this matrix, and notice that if this matrix, right, if it's invertible, then this matrix, this uh, P is basically also defining a transition matrix to some new basis. So in other words, what I'm saying here is if I take this to be my basis, so I take P of each of the individual um, basis vectors, the linear, so I take the linear operator on each uh, basis vector, this is going to be in, give me a new basis um, as long as it's invertible. So I need this to be invertible for this to work. Uh, and that gives us a transition matrix from B to uh, C, right? So in other words, we have this, uh, this linear operator is going to define both a uh, matrix for the linear transformation, but also will be the linear transformation, the, the, the transformation matrix, uh, transition matrix for two bases. Uh, so it's pretty nice. But the, the extra nice thing uh, is the following remark in that the linear operator actually does not depend on the choice of a basis. So it doesn't really matter what our choice of basis is, um, but the matrix of a linear operator does require a choice of basics, right? So the linear operator is basically acting on the vectors themselves, but the vectors don't really care what the basis is, right? They're just taking one vector to another vector. It doesn't really care what it is, what the basis is. But when we look at the matrix itself, this is dependent on the choice of basis. This is why we have this little B notation next to the brackets of P. Um, so yeah. So this video is long enough, so we'll stop here um, and we'll get into examples, theorems, and lemmas in the next, uh, in the next couple. Yeah, we'll do that next time. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Peace.